Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a topic that comes up roughly every three hours in my message box, and that is I'm performing a retrofit and I need to figure out my motor mount length in order to perform the retrofit. My machine is such and such years old and I want to use your motors or I want to use another motor and how do I come across doing um, the motor mounts in the most economical manner using the proper substrate to give you the most rigidity. So let's go over what I've got here. I've got a NEMA 23. Uh, this is a 600 ounce motor. It's actually a NEMA 24. I get this question a lot. We'll cover that real quick. The difference between a NEMA 23 and a NEMA 24 is the length of the motor. That's how we get more torque out of this. It's just a longer motor body. Okay, motor mount platform is still a NEMA 23. This monster over here is one of my NEMA 34s. This is 1700 ounce motor. You can see the size difference. What you see right here are 10 millimeter 18.8 standoffs. Now to give you some um, specs on these, the outer diameter on these are eight millimeters. The length of it is 10 millimeters, of course, and again, it's for an M5 screw because NEMA 23 all takes M5. Now being we're using 18.8 st stainless, these are 80,000 PSI rated. That's 80,000 pounds per square inch of tensile strength rated. Their Rockwell hardness is B60. Um, I don't have to explain to you guys how hard stainless is in comparison to aluminum, but what I do want to make very clear is the simplistic factor of what you're looking at here. What I've done is having machined these down to 10 millimeter spacers, you simply take your 5 millimeter bolt that you supply with your machine and you just stack these and that will give you within 10 millimeters, positive or negative, your spacing required for your standoff. What does this do? Well, let's look at the problem it solves. We have a proprietary, typical aluminum motor adapter. And this is a high quality unit, okay? This is all machined out of 6061, it's all one piece. It's got the coupler spacing, and you do have the slice so you can actually access your motor coupler. The problem with this is, once again, when you have this mounted to your machine, and you're trying to figure out what motor do I mount here in the spacing? How do I achieve this spacing without remanufacturing this entire piece? Now you come into, okay, we need the simplest factor to get me as close to there as possible. Now what you see here is my NEMA 34 version of the same actual spacer. Um, the outer diameter on these are 13 millimeter. Now this is, again, 18.8 stainless. The length is 10 millimeter. It's designed for an M6 screw. Once again, NEMA 34s all use M6. Uh, PSI rating is 80,000 pounds, and again, Rockwell hardness of the B60. So when we use these, and we actually come over here, and we want to stack these, we can stack these and get us the spacing we want, positive or negative, 10 millimeter. Now, anybody who's ever done a retrofit realizes this does not have to be exact, but it has to be close enough to give you the spacing required. Now you can see here, once again, you can come a little shorter, or you can stack one more and come a little longer, and you've instantly designed yourself a motor mount that's adjustable. Now the next problem that we have to solve, how do we do this at a cost ratio that makes the most sense? We already know this is the hardest substrate you're gonna get for rigidity as far as for motor mounts, okay? Aluminum is great, this is a beautiful piece, but first of all, it's got its limitations. With a coupler design like this, you only have one access point on here meaning the coupler has to be rotated in order for you to access it, okay? With this feature set up, you can see here when it's mounted on the motor itself, you're all open across the entire motor for easy accessibility, okay? On top of that, the cost of having this machine will exceed, believe it or not, the cost of me providing you these spacers. Now, when you factor in that, why would you buy this when you can have stainless? and the standoffs are adjustable, I don't think there's really a competition there. It's really just a common sense type choice. So what we've done here is I wanted to take away the guesswork for you guys having to actually go through and make your own mounts. Because again, with this being adjustable, you essentially, if I provide you 84 of these standoffs, that would cover a 70 mil mount, meaning a 70 mil length mount on each motor for a three axis system, okay? If you broke down the math at what these would cost to machine or have made or go anywhere, I can rest assured you would find that the price would be higher.
than what I'm offering these for. And the best part of all is that they're totally adjustable. Let's say you need to subtract 40 millimeters off your mounts, you can do that. Even if I supply you 84 of these, you would then just take and use the ones that you require. You wouldn't be going back and forth, well, I measured this and this doesn't seem right, or better yet, and I get this a lot too. I wanna to use the same motors on another chassis that now I have to have mounts made for that. Well, if you buy this kit and you have the adjustable mounts, you just select the ones that are appropriate to the chassis you're using. Matter of fact, if you buy a set of 84 and you only need maybe 30 or 40 on that particular chassis, you'll have extras left over and you can then use those to start building your other mount to support your other robot. This makes engineering very simple, very efficient, and once again brings you at a level that this will never touch. And that was the whole idea. Because once again, the one thing that we all know is that when it comes to automation, the motors are simple. I mean, whether we're dealing with a, a servo or a stepper, but mounting this motor in a rigid platform that, again, is adjustable and is easy for end users to take measurements on and, and use that application for whatever robot they're designing or automation platform, this is the easiest way to do it, bar none. And again, I get questions a lot on this, and I'll just show you here what we've got. Matter of fact, I've got a, here's an eight mil screw. It's not very long, but, uh, or excuse me, a six mil screw. It's not very long, but you can see here when I hear, I hear guys say, well, you've got a lot of play, there is no play. You've got slight tolerance just to let that screw in there a couple thousands, approximately, uh, I believe, 0.2 millimeter. So again, this will provide you the easiest platform to once again give you a motor mount that without a doubt is simple and you can then take fewer measurements and be certain that it's going to work. I cannot tell you how many times guys will tell me, oh, hey, I need this this spacer made. Then I make the spacer and they come back and say, well, I need to add more to it. Then they have to buy it again because it's a custom made component. You guys will find that if you go to a machine shop, you're not, they're not going to naturally take back the part that, that was made. You wouldn't either if it's custom. So again, these are things we can do to alleviate that problem and give you guys an adjustable format for any size motor. Believe it or not, these will even work with NEMA 42. So again, uh, depending on the motor you have, depending on uh, the particular mount you need, the only thing you really have holding you back then is the screw length. You guys provide the screw, as long as it's five mil for a NEMA 23, or you go six mil, I've had guys do that as well. You just have to bore out your holes and make sure your screw's head clearance on the stepper is correct. You could go with either one of these, and you can see they both work. So it just depends on what you're going with, but without a doubt, the stainless spacer for motor mounts is the easiest way to go. So again, I hope that the video has been helpful. I love doing a visual representation. I'm so thankful I had this actually in stock because once again, I have a lot of clients doing uh, full retrofits on their system. And the question I always get is, oh man, I need this mount. And in this particular case, you can see what this client was dealing with. You had one size here and then it tapered over to another size. Beautiful uh, mount but very difficult to deal with if you had to machine this. You bring it to the shop, they gotta do the engineering, reverse it, all that neat stuff. That's a pain. This is much easier, and that's the idea. Whenever we can simplify it, and again, we utilize simple hardware to convert into a, a structure that we need, once again, to give us maximum rigidity, and again, maximum simplicity, your price and cost to actually implement goes down, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. So I hope that this makes sense. Again, check them out, guys. I mean, again, I have guys that are messaging me constantly about different mount sizes and this and that. I will sell these individual. I will sell them in groups. If you need groups, I can custom put platforms together. Um, we've got, I've got a lot of these in stock right now. I've got about 20,000 units. So again, these are going to take this at a whole new level when guys are trying to automate their system, regardless of brand, make, model, or even motor type. So I think this will definitely help you out a lot. Um, thank you all for your support. Again, if you guys do have questions, if you require quotes, you can message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me direct through my eDealer Direct store on eBay. That'll be in the link in the description as well as all of these uh, components. You'll see the links for those as well. And like I said, just check them out, do your math, and you guys will see 
I really think that you know the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. When we're looking at this kind of simplicity, there's really no no end justification to going with something like this. Again, I see these all over eBay. I see different formats for NEMA 23, and usually guys buy them, and being it's a set spacer, they find out, oh, man, my coupler, I, I don't have enough clearance on the motor body, or I don't have enough clearance on the CNC chassis, or I'm too far away from my actual... Um, uh, screw to have proper thread depth to go into the chassis. Well, all of a sudden, these problems all arise, and you bought this one solid uh, mount, and you can't solve that. You need to solve it with this. We just remove or add, depending upon how many we need. So it's simple as that. So, guys, thank you all for your support. My subscribers, guys, I love you. Keep the questions coming. I'll, I'll do my best to answer you. Right now, the shop has been crazy busy. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and is healthy. Um, again, Thank you all for your support. Take care.